How's it going everybody? Hello and welcome to MTA number 20 for the 4th of October 2018. This is Mosen and we're still sick as you can hear probably. If you've heard the voice before you can realize that it is it's sick. I'm rip. Um, but nonetheless man it's been dragging on for days and I want to get 20 out. And um, so we're just gonna do it like this, and then that's how it's gonna be. Anyway, so let's get started. We got a longer one for the 20th episode, and um, it's a pretty cool one because um, somebody, like somebody, linked um, uh, this Reddit post in our guild channel. Uh, it was Necrush, I think, and it's about a comp comparison between you know what is you know, what, what what are the key points of that made any version of wow before i don't know maybe cataclysm Mr. of pandaria better than the the current one and i thought we'd just go through this article real quick and that's going to be the episode for today because can't really do that much right now but i wanted to get something out and uh, maybe I'll pre-record the next one for tomorrow. Uh, I got a lot of editing to do, so let's not stumble around and waste time. And it's this one. Um, and it's by, I have to check who it actually is by. And this is just um, you know, Yuffie. Yuffie posted, Remember the good times of character customization and non-RNG progression, where professions mattered and you felt like playing an RPG. Hmm. I'll take a sip of coffee for this. And he links the image. And this is the image. We're going to look at it real quick. I'll put it in the video. And you can see um, a couple of glyphs, right? Like rogue glyphs. And um, uh, a set. I don't know which set that is. But um, 80. I think it's... I think it's Wrath. It should be Wrath. You can maybe you're smart than me. It should be Wrath set, like a five set bonus uh, type set from of a of a plate wearer. Um, then you got gems here, and you got a big fat talent tree. This must be like I don't know. Um, probably something. Is this Wrath? This is not Wrath. This talent tree should be Cataclysm, I think. Not Wrath. I don't know. You name it. Um, it's pretty long. Let's put it that way. I would have to check out what it was. And of course what he means by that is the good times. I'm just going to open some, some mail here. Let's open everything up. Uh, also I'm going to make some good old gold videos, right? I'll make some gold here on the on the vanillas. Um, so what he of course means is um, Right now on, on, on Classic all this stuff is gone. There's no more gems, there's no more glyphs, there's no real sets. Let's put it that way. And there's no, certainly not those talent trees. And some people really like that those talent trees are gone, but um, we'll get into that. So um, this is what he linked and he of course means that playing an RPG, when, when people just a thing first before we go into the big shit below this post. Um, what people mean by customization and and you know playing an RPG and non RNG and professions mattered is of course that um, you know you back in, in that in those times you had or playing an RPG. What people mean by that is that you have a character that is not as replaceable in every sense. As um, as it is today, right? So today, if you have like a character and you wanna you wanna play, um, you know, you're playing a, a red paladin and you got some abilities and then you got some items and that's you know basically it. What you can change is the uh, talent points or not not the talent points. You can change your specialization things that is now called talents, and that's it. And back in the day, and pro let's face it, professions do not matter anymore. It doesn't 
fucking matter. You don't need to even have a profession. I mean, the, the best thing I can think of, at least when I played Legion, was to be a cook so you can put a put down a, a feast and maybe alchemist to, to make you potions. But even that, just, you, know, you would just buy it and it really didn't matter. You couldn't make anything cool. And yeah, so... Um, what they mean by that is with those glyphs, of course, you had a chance to put your character into a certain direction, right? You wanted to be more of a... Of course, like, you were a combat rogue that um, used daggers, for example, right? Um, but you would you, know, you would push the um, Garot uh, glyph a little bit more so that you would... Um, go more for your uh, dot damage, right? You wanted to let people bleed out. That was your playstyle, right? You would um, push hemorrhage and uh, maybe rupture a little bit more because you wanted to have like a rogue that really makes their opponent suffer and then bleed, lets them bleed out and he vanishes again and drags them down over time. Or you wanted to be, you know, a priest that works more with absorb. So you'd go, um, you know, all the absorb glyphs in there and... I remember playing that, and uh, or you wanted to be a holy priest that goes heavily on on group healing, right? Direct group healing, all those things put into the glyphs. Then, of course, these the sets and and all these things were like little ad- things, a little little um, keystone or, or, or stones, cornerstones where you could put your character into a certain direction and make it unique from others. You were still rogue, but you would be unique in the sense that um, you could. You know, play around with even, I mean, talent points, you know, gems, all that stuff. You could go more into stamina, so you, you, know, you wouldn't die all, all that quickly. You'd PvP a lot in the open world, so you go more for stamina instead, more crit, right? All those things were choices, right? All, all these things were choices. We'll get into this. And um, talents, of course, were like the biggest thing where you could really say, hey, I want to be, this is not the most optimal way to play, uh, uh, but I want to play like this because I really just like this talent and I, I like the combination of these two talents. That's how I like to play. Not possible anymore. And now let's start and uh, get into this because there's a really, really, really well written r- uh, response from Maximum Effort 433. And um, maybe we'll get to him. Uh, but uh, you, sir, did this really, really well and you are speaking the truth. That you should go and preach it. So, one second, please. Right. Just had to, um, blow the nose real quick, so it's not, uh, terrible for you to listen. So, he says, um, remember the, the question was, remember the good times when blah blah blah. And he says, I think it's less that, and more how they're trying to tell the story. Uh, Old School WoW was kind of like a hunting safari. It dropped you in the middle of nowhere and said the game is over that way. Today WoW is more like a theme park. Come along, heroes. Follow me down this beautiful trail. And no, what's that on on your left? Why, it's the Iron Horde. Boy, they sure look like someone I'd want to mess with. Wait, oh no, they're reading their siege engines. Watch out, heroes. You'd better stop them before they power up. Now, the problem with the theme park design is that you have to keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. In the case of this game, it means that Blizzard has to take a lot of choice away from the player, just out of necessity. They need to tell the player where to go, how to get there, and what to do once they arrive, and that requires simplicity and predictability predictability, and on the part of the design team. Let's put that. take that... Um, Paragraph first, and then we'll see what that means. Um, what he says is basically that's like the, the starting point, and it's it's kind of true. Like remember when you were in um, like classic or even Burning Crusade, even still, and you know you would you'd, you'd start out, and um, once you left the, um, I mean shit, man. Some some people didn't even find the first quest giver. Of course, that's a rare occasion, but. Right. Once you left the um, starting zone, you would, you know, go and see where where quests were, and then all of a sudden there were no more quests to find. So you would venture through the world and try to find a new town, and um, that was basically what he said. You know, the hunting safari. You dropped somewhere. Okay, here's the rules of the game. Here's some uh, gr- um, gray and green um, or gray and and uh, white items, and now you go and have fun. 
and uh, you'll see. Like once you're through that level, find out where the new town is. Talk to people where it is. You know, hey, where's you know? I'm I'm done with Darkshore. Where do I go? Uh, this looks like a new zone, Ashenvale. So this is where, where's the town? There's a town called Astronar down that road, and people would go there, and then you know your journey would continue. That nowadays you get dropped somewhere. There's like a big fucking uh, you know exclamation mark popping up. And it says like, hey, this is how you can do your talents, and this is where you go. And uh, did you see the dungeon finder yet? Find a guild right here, and this tool that makes you find a guild. You don't need to talk, you just need to press this button. And you need to go here, and then you get uh, your spells put into your action bars. You don't need to go somewhere and talk to people. All that kind of stuff, that's what he means with um, theme park and the hunting safari. So he's absolutely right, right there. Um... And he goes on to say, let's see, we're doing some auctioning here on the Fresh Dale. Um, I'm going to put in all my glorious King's Blood. Of course, I'm put it in in 10 stacks because I'm not a douche with all one stacks. Okay, there we go. The upside to this is that they can tell incredible stories, build beautiful rides, and provide an amazing experience in that regard. This is often called a walled garden, a managed ecosystem, and managed ecosystems need to be small. But let's give credit where credit is due. I don't think anyone is bitching about how Battle of Azeroth or Legion or Wad have been telling their stories. Confusing, extremely entertaining, even more so. The downside is that taking is that by taking more control over your, our characters, giving us prescribed paths to get from A to B to C, is that leaves less control and choice for the players. People joke about fun detected, but there is some modicum of truth in that. Blizzard often solves their problems with a machete when all they needed was a scalpel. Um, absolutely clear. I think that's uh, pretty, pretty clear in itself. Um, you know, the the down the upside is that that you can of course lead people and it's more like a movie kind of thing and then you tell the story and then you go here and you go here and you go here and everything is a little bit more streamlined and uh, of course it's 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 easier to tell the story if not all your quest if you don't even find the quest line where it, where it leads to right Cadgar is standing at the flight path and. There's people yelling, oh, you should go and see Khadgar. And then there's like this intro cutscene. I mean, people even said that they like it more nowadays. They didn't play WoW well before because there were no, um, you know, video sequences in between. And you, that's all in now, right? You, you finish a part of a quest line and there's like a video sequence. It's, it's like a, they said they like the reward of having a small video of how the story unfolds. Of course, that wasn't possible back in the day, but, um, you know. Still, still. Um, so let's continue. That's pretty clear. Think of how many specs were refantasized to fit the mold of Legion artifacts as an example. These restrictions have left many specs feeling broken and generic. Doesn't it feel these days like your, your prot warrior is identical to every other prot warrior on the server? A demolock is demolock is a demolock. Oh, you're a fire mage? Yeah, I know your rotation by heart. How many classes have combo points now? Build up five canoodles, then cash them all in on this big, awesome spell. Yeah, Red, Pelly, Rogue, etc. I don't know what, what else has combo points these days. Exactly. And, you know, right here on, on Classic, of course, and again, we're not bitching about it. I just f found this this guy had, like, real insight. Really good good boy. Um, you know, you can play prop wire in the way that um, you're the absolute one main tank and you would pick different talents for that because you never you know, want to get stunned or you um, need you know absolutely ev need to get everything out in, uh, in terms of uh, threat also, right? You want to have a spec that complements your threat generation. All those sorts of uh, a thing. And you can be a prop warrior that is just usually um, like the third tank or the second tank and you want to have a more offensive play style, right? So you want to go a, a, f a few points into the pro tree and then have more into an offensive tree. And then you want to, uh, you know, help dealing damage when, when your first target is usually dead. All those things. Um, I don't even want to speak about, like, mages. Uh, there's so many specs for that stuff. Um, 
Now it's all the same, like your fire mage, all the same. And you could argue, of course, there's always the, um, usually the best cookie cutter spell, uh, um, spec, right? There's, there's one best spec, but even in those best specs, you can still usually swap around one or two, three, four, five points into other talents and not everyone's playing the perfect spec. And you can, you know, you, you could theoretically play by choice a little bit different and you can't in, in, uh, and retail. So he goes on to say that um, it didn't always used to be this way. For those who are out of the loop on classic talents or may have forgotten why we went back, well, now he goes into the um, explaining how that, uh, uh, how all, the, all, all of this uh, worked, like 5% extra, blah, blah. Um, and yeah, but. The important point is they were flippin' impossible to balance. They were confusing for some players, and the open nature of the trees meant that there were a lot of unpredictable hybrid specs that Blizz had to manage on the fly. Right? Unpredictable specs. You know, if you wanted to be like the best, you need to use the best spec, but you could play it differently. Um, it was a problem. And Cataclysm, they sorted most of these problems out. They simplified talents, got rid of the extra uninteresting garbage. Um, that's debatable. I need a sip of coffee for this. Um, right, uninteresting garbage. Reworked the trees so a player could only make a hybrid spec once they filled out their main tree. Had a good mix of boring stats and interesting skills. By and large, the player base actually seemed pretty okay with the changes. We had lost a lot of our hybrid specs, but core talents uh, specs really shined. And this is what I got from a lot of people that played Cataclysm still. Um, uh, I, I dropped out at, at some point, but I remember there were still specs, you know, we would be like a Discipline Priest, or Holy Priest, or Shadow Priest. It would be a Red Pelly, absolutely viable, Prot Pelly, um, Holy Pelly. All of this was perfectly viable, but you, you would have to go into a spec and then put the rest basically in, into the into the other other talent tree or specialization um, that was still even okayish for me right but talent trees are still cooler right you can do whatever the hell you want um, now we go into TLDR but we're far away from the TLDR end um, all talents were not as confusing, complicated, or boring as you may have heard. They were predictable and dependable ways of empowering our character, how we saw fit. I, th I think this is the key point, right? They were predictable and dependable ways of empowering the character, how you would like it to be. Want to do a min-max cookie cutter build? Hit up Icy Veins. Want to do a fun situational build that would make a theory crafter throw up in his head? Play all around on training dummies until you find something you like? And no, not everyone used cut, uh, cookie cutter builds. Oh my Jesus! Not everybody used cookie cutter builds. The person who tells you that everyone used cookie cutter builds is probably one of the players who only used cookie cutter builds themselves. Jesus! What a sentence! What a sentence! Um, there we go. When Mist of Pandaria rolled out, Blizzard decided to trash the updated classic talent trees in favor of something more streamlined and simple. Blizzard's explanation was that they didn't like players just simming the most powerful talent combination and picking those, they made the cookie cutter argument. The player base, meanwhile, had been paying attention to Blizzard's bitching about how difficult it was balancing trees for years. It was my opinion, it was my opinion and the opinion of many others that Blizzard simplified their talent system for their own benefit make things easier on them. Now that now that would be fine if the players didn't lose anything in the process, if the replacement system had been an improvement over the older one. Something that I'm still not convinced is the case. Yes, correct. Basically, um, yeah, they streamlined the, the stuff because they said, well, everybody's using the best tree anyway, which wasn't true. Right? You're still taking away choice from the player, and I think that's always, you know, it's always the worst choice, the worst development choice that you can do. If you're t taking away a choice from the player that has previously been there, if it wasn't there in the first place, you can argue, okay, that's fine. 
but if you're taking it away, it's 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 pretty terrible design. And let's face it, they they made it so it you could you know there was a lot of bitching about you know arena and all that stuff. And um, you know it's it's an RPG. Not everybody is. If you're Jesus, if you're if you're playing the Moonkin, for God's sake, you you will know that you're not going to be as as you know crazy of a DPS as a as a fire mage in AQ forty or you know a red paladin. You're always going to struggle. That's that's the nature of it, right? But you 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 are allowed to play what you want to play, right? And it's that's that's the magic of it, and it is actually the magic of it. Because you can do whatever the hell you want. That that's what makes this world so alive. And um, yes, so they would streamline that, and um, basically it was in their interest to make it a bit more. And just remember, this was around the time where you know streamlined games like League of Legends were pretty pretty fucking big already, right? They they peaked with so many players, and I, I can guarantee you that they wanted to simplify it and. You know, RPG was not the name of the game anymore, right? And they thought, well, if we stream like, like League of Legends, then maybe people come over to play our game. But it's it's not true. It's a different game. It's a different style. In War- Warlords of Draenor, Blizz dubbed down on the simplification scheme, culling spells from every class and spec in the game. This was again done in the name of streamlining and simplifications, basically taking away a lot of spells that were, in their opinion, just not used anymore. And I'm okay with that if it's absolutely, you know, st- a stupid spell that nobody needs, sure. But again, you know, you know, track humanoids as a feral druid is pretty, pretty cool for battlegrounds. It's a very niche ability, and you don't really need to have it. You could have it baseline, but if you do that everywhere, it takes away from the magic. Um, many specs were simplified to the point of not being recognizable. My primary experience is with the mage, a class I had been playing since vanilla. Fire mages lost access to almost all spells in the frost and arcane trees. Um, you've been using frostbolt as part of your fire rotation for the last 10 years, but that's not part of our character, fantasy, class, fantasy, spec, fantasy. Right. I use it ex- as an example, not because what was taken from my spec was any better or worse than any other spec in the game. It's just the spec I know best, that's all. And then, yeah, everybody lost something, every class lost something, blah de blah de blah um, So basically, right, um, they were always cutting more spells um, down and um, simplifying how, how things worked. And I, I remember, for example, um, you know, the Paladin, the Holy Paladin and Legion. I mean, what the hell was that? That was an ab- abomination of what it used to be. Yes. You know, Holy Pally was never the, the class where you would move. I, I played a priest, and that was fucking fun, running around with penance, and then you had to use a greater heal, and you had to know where, when to use your abilities. Holy Pally was usually, usually, just, you know, you had a beacon of light, and you had, you know, flash shields. You were a single target healer, and you were strong at it. You were good at it. And what happened to Legion was just like this this new idea of, of having him run around, which was cool, whacking targets so he could he could, you know, do something. Good idea, just terribly implemented in the game. And, you know, this was... And he provides here a link, I think, where um, what all the things that got removed. And um, he goes on to say... So let's cut a little bit of the, um, the stuff. Um, right, uh, of course, the... Uh, I don't need to tell you what happened to artifacts when Legion ended or where their player base is now. Also, the um, yeah artifacts are gone, or the um, yeah legendaries and artifacts. Let's put it that way. That's also gone now, so they're they're uh, switching a little bit um, yeah, the direction. I think. Anyway, he goes on to say that it is my opinion that Blizzard's continued attempts to replace what they've removed is where the game is starting to run into problems. The changes they're making to the game are at such a fundamental level that the uh, repercussions can ripple out to even the newest content. Legion's artifacts had to take the place of lost talents and missing spells. Now Azerite has to take the place of lost talents and missing spells and artifacts. This is a really good key point, in my opinion. If you think about it, like seriously, 
What we did on Legion is we got an artifact and the most fun we had was unlocking new traits on your artifact weapon. Like remember when you, you know, you would level up or you'd, you'd gain AP and then you would get, you know, a new ability from your weapon. And you know what that is? It's a talent tree. I mean, it can be, it really can't be that hard to, to acknowledge this or see this, right? It's a talent tree. It's a tree where you put points in to unlock stuff. And why put, you know, and I don't want to, anyway, you, you, you get the point. And now that is gone too. And now they have to find a new stupid thing because they're not backpedaling on the talent system. They want to keep it in place. I mean, hell, just make it simpler, for God's sake, again. You don't need these, you know, seven pages long talent trees. I get that it doesn't make sense. Anyway, now they're putting an Ezra to take the place. The next expansion will have to make something to take the place of lost talents, missing spells, artifacts, and Azerite. It's a treadmill within a treadmill, and Blizzard has no idea of how to get rid of it. How many pieces can be replaced before it's not the same game anymore? Talents, spells, artifacts, Azerite, glyphs, everything that we players see as a way of remaking our character in our own image has been pried up and replaced only to be pried up and replaced again. The cycle is unsustainable, no matter how hard they may try to sustain it. Edit. If Asmund Gold reacts to this, I want to be in the screenshot. Hi, Mom. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he did. Maybe he did. Um, I didn't even actually read this. So Asmund Gold, if you, maybe he also read this out already. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, it's only me, and I'm very small. And your mom won't see it because my channel is, is toilet. I'm sorry. But anyway, those are the words of the gods. And again, maximum effort, 433. Thank you very much for this input to the community. And people, of course, swarm out and agree with him. Um, I just want to give you this link or, you know, give attention to it from the small scale that I have. But um, go read the whole thing for yourself, because I know when someone reads something out to you, it's, it's a little bit shitty, especially with my sick voice right now. But I just wanted to get this done. I wanted to do this for a couple of days. Bit sick, couldn't do it. So I hope you enjoyed this one. And um, most importantly, let me think, uh, let me know what you think in the, in the comments about the, the glyphs. I, for example, didn't actually like glyphs that much. But I liked everything else. And, um, but, you know, I'd rather have glyphs than this uh, abomination of talent tree system, what they have, and better for Azeroth at the moment. So, let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna fire up the stream tonight again. Would love to see some people of you there. I thank you very much for your time and bearing with my voice, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.